By the time Trent Reznor started work on his second album, he'd become one of alternative rock's biggest stars. Nine Inch Nails' 1989 debut, Pretty Hate Machine, was an unexpected hit. It spent 115 weeks on the Billboard 200, sold over a million copies, and landed the band an opening slot on the Guns N' Roses European tour. Banking on a sequel that could surpass Pretty Hate Machine's success, Reznor's new label, Interscope Records, gave him a recording budget large enough to turn a mansion in Los Angeles into a live-in studio. In late 1992, he moved into the house on Cielo Drive, where 23 years earlier, members of the Manson family murdered five people, including Sharon Tate. A little over a year later, he emerged with a new work he called The Downward Spiral. It opens with the sound of a man being beaten, sampled from George Lucas's dystopian 1971 film THX 1138, setting the tone for an album themed around violent self-recrimination. Its first video, for the song March of the Pigs, makes the motif literal. Set at a breakneck 269 beats per minute, the song's a whiplash-inducing hybrid of industrial music and speed metal. For the video, Reznor and his touring band performed live on a soundstage, with Reznor shoving his sidemen, knocking over gear, and dropping mics throughout. While Reznor claimed to have been unaware of the history of the house on Cielo Drive when he moved in, apparent allusions to the murders there pop up throughout the album. Among them are the lyrics to Piggy, which echo the word pig that Manson family member Susan Atkins painted on the front door in Tate's blood. Reznor's fascination with violence comes to a peak on Big Man with a Gun. Although only a minute and a half long, the track caused an outsized controversy. Anti-obscenity crusaders C. Dolores Tucker and William Bennett used its lyrics to accuse Interscope's parent company, Warner Brothers, of peddling violence. While Tucker and Bennett lumped it in alongside tracks by Dr. Dre and Tupac, Reznor originally intended the song as a parody of what he called misogynistic gangster rap bullshit. Big Man with a Gun wasn't the only contentious moment on the downward spiral. Despite its obscenity-filled chorus, Reznor's ode to sexual domination, Closer, became a surprise hit after its release in the spring of 1994. With an infectious beat, inspired by Iggy Pop's nightclubbing, the song reached number 41 on Billboard's Hot 100, boosted the album to quadruple platinum success, and ignited controversy along the way. On its paid hotline, the pro-censorship Parents Music Resource Center described the song as bordering on the satanic. Meanwhile, director Mark Romanek's video caused a stir with its depictions of nudity, bondage, and a monkey tied to a cross even though MTV ran a heavily edited version. While Closer was the Downward Spiral's biggest hit, its most indelible song turned out to be the album's final track, Hurt, a hushed ballad closing out an album full of punishing beats, harsh noise, and transgressive imagery. Hurt is a raw confession of addiction and despair. It became a centerpiece of Nine Inch Nails concerts and a 1996 Grammy nominee for the best rock song. But it didn't reach classic status until Johnny Cash released a breathtaking cover in 2002. Reznor later admitted that after he heard Cash's version, he thought, that song isn't mine anymore. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel. The downward spiral helped turn Trent Reznor into one of the biggest rock stars in the world and brought a new level of sonic experimentation into the pop realm. But its greatest accomplishment is showing what's possible when an artist is willing to dig deep into the darkest corners of their psyche and share with the world what they find there. <laughs>